What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Untamed Opinion. We're going to be previewing the 2020 Miami Hurricanes. I'm with Fernando once again, but instead of the orange Miami Dolphins hat, he is sporting a black and orange Miami Hurricanes Ibis T. A tank we don't just do the NFL, baby. We do about the U, too. <laughs> ah, it's all about the U, of course, of course. Well, before we get to 2020, let's uh, do a quick recap of 2019. Uh, 2019 came to a merciful end. Uh, it came to a disappointing end. After three straight wins uh, over Florida State, Louisville, and uh, there was another opponent in there somewhere, uh, we lost three straight. Uh, to FIU out of all teams, Duke, and worst, worst loss in program history, by the way. La, that, that was a heart wrench. That was a heart wrencher right there. That, yeah, let's just say my wife stayed away from me for all weekend long after that <laughs> loss. <laughs> I was not happy. But after the 2019 season ended, uh, Dan Enos, uh, the day after the bowl game, uh, Left. He well, it was actually announced before the bowl game that that was going to be his last game. But thank God. Uh, yeah, every fan, everybody was going to be clamoring. It's like this guy has to be done. We have to change what's going on offense. That's and, the great of Tua. He made Dan Enos look great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He made well. He wasn't even calling the plays either. There, at Alabama. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, during the during the offensive coordinator search, you know, Manny Diaz cleaned house on the offensive side of the ball, got rid of everybody on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, and during the offensive coordinator search, a lot of names popped up and some that were just completely wild and didn't make any sense. Um, before I talk about that, I want to get one thing off my chest here regarding the coaching staff. Manny Diaz is the right man for this job. Okay. And this is my personal take. That is my personal uh, biased if you want. When he was defensive coordinator, he talked to talk and he walked the walk as defensive coordinator. I didn't want him to leave it. I knew he was going to leave at some point to get a head coaching job. I know a lot of Canes fans out there, they wanted to say that they wanted somebody with already head coaching experience and whatnot. Well, you know what? I had my faith in Manny Diaz. He did a lot of talking and he blew up social media, blew up the college landscape social media in his first year as coach. You know, with the swag and everything, with the with the bat signal and all these things that were going on on Instagram and on Twitter and everything. And the season didn't work out the way it was supposed to work out or what we were hoping it would work out. And uh, 2020 comes around and Manny Diaz has a whole nother approach. You know, he is not as active on social media. He's not the... You know, I'm going to be coming on the yacht type of, of coach right now. He's going to let the work speak for itself. And it has shown here in 2020. You can see where he's more focused now. He, you know, he's gotten off the whole social media thing. Uh, in large part, he's letting the players do it. He's letting the other coach, he's letting the coaching staff, he's letting the players do it for him in a sense. And he's just going out there. Uh, he went out, selected his uh, offensive coordinator, and Rhett Lashley, uh, whose last stint at SMU brought the number seven offense uh, in the nation. And SMU was once a program that, correct me if I'm wrong, was either on the brink of elimination or getting rid of the football program. They even have a football program at one point. They, they were eliminated. They, yeah, they, 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 they stopped, stopped for like a year or two. Program, yeah, and they yeah I was back. off the top of my head here. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, they go and get Rhett Lashley, which was a brilliant, which was a home run of a move uh, offensive corner because he's going to bring the spread offense uh, and it's going to, you know, what we need is a lot of points being scored because our defense can stop people. It's our offense that needs to score to win the games here. Uh, they get wide receiver coach Rob Likens. They get offensive lineman, uh, offensive line coach Garen, uh, Garen Justice. And, uh, they get their 2020 recruiting class coming off a six and seven season. Yes. There were some players that we could have had that we should have had, you know, but you know, there was a lot of question marks and it was the, the early recruiting signing period is what kind of hurt the Canes in some instances with some recruits. Okay. Because coming off a six and seven, you don't know who your offensive coordinator is. It's a lot of question marks, a lot of negativity, a lot of down, uh, going down in, in Coral Gables there. Uh, but look how quick Manny Diaz turned that around, you know, with the hiring of his staff, 
with a recruiting with a top 15 recruiting class. I think they were number 12 or 13, depending who you looked at. Now with the adding of Isaiah Walker just recently, now they move up to a potential, you know, 10, 11. So they have a, a strong recruiting class. And uh, that all goes to what Manny Diaz is just out there grinding. Can he, that just shows how much he loves to be at UM and wants to be the UM coach. What is your take, Fernando? Uh, I'll tell you, man, I think Man Manny Diaz is the right man for the job. Okay. Like, hey, the U, they've showed it. They they're not gonna put big money into the athletic program. Oh, uh, so and uh, for them to spend four million dollars on his buyout from the temple contract is a big thing. So Manny Diaz, this is a make or break year for Manny Diaz. Okay. Yeah. Bringing that Rhett, bringing in Rhett Lashley is probably his best move ever because uh, we talked about Enos. Enos was trying to bring in this pro-style offense. And for the pro-style offense to work, you need the offensive line. And yeah. we don't have pro – we don't have pro-ready offensive line. It's just sad to say. We had uh, Zion in the left tackle. The guy, the guy was weighing 220 pounds when he got into the U. And he, he was just too young. They're too light. They're not strong enough. They're not – it's, it's just it, – the, the pro-style offense is not going to work right now with the way the University of Miami is recruiting or being able to recruit or had been able to recruit in the past because it looks like it's changing a little bit now. Now, with Rhett Lashley coming in and bringing in the spread offense, it's a little bit more simpler. The receivers mm – -hmm. It, hey, it's one word. Hey, we have a, a, a slant here, an out here, a post there. It's simple stuff. Hey, get up to the line, run it. Tempo. And the biggest, the biggest thing that came with Red Lashley is Derrick King. Derrick mm -hmm. King comes in here. He took a red shirt year last year saying he's going to rest and sign up to the right program. Boom. Hey, he comes to the University of Miami. This brings it, – it's, it's the Manny Diaz effect. It's the Manny Diaz being able to still recruit, bring it, being able to make the U relevant even after a 67 season and a disappointing uh, bowl loss. I mean, we had all the momentum was going down. The loss against FIU, which is the worst loss in, in the program's history, that could have sunk us. We could have been completely out of it. But now, you know, and coming off a bowl loss, a bowl, the momentum going into the offseason is a bowl loss. And we're still able to get Derrick King, who is a top, what, three candidate for the Heisman next year, be just because of Red Lashley yeah. and the system, mm -hmm. you know, now we can have the offensive line that we have now. Everything is going to be simpler. The ball is going to come out quicker. You have to block a little bit less. You know, you, you just it's, it just makes every, the whole offense is going to be simpler. The whole offense is going to be easier for the players. And it's going to be – that this is, this is exactly what – the team need this is exactly what Manny Diaz needs because yeah. this is a make or break year for Manny Diaz and Red Lashley might save this guy's career before Red Lashley starts getting some head coaching uh, interviews because I don't think Red Lashley is going to be with us for too long. I mean, I'm hoping for at least two, three seasons. You know, this kind of reminds me of when, uh, uh, oh my gosh, uh, Mark Mark Rick came into UM. And he's, and he, you know, he's an offensive minded coach or quarterbacks coach. He's kind of like, you know, quarterback. He wants to be working with the quarterbacks and calling plays and he needed somebody for the defense. He gets many ideas in here and, you know, he's like, listen, here's the keys to the defense. Just tell me what you're doing. You know, keep me abreast of what you're doing, but he, here's yeah. the defense. You just do you. And that's yeah. what many is needed. We were all excited. And to give many ideas credit, you got to play fair. What's fair is fair is that when Danny Enos was hired, that hire was very well received around college football. And, you know, he was up and coming. Nick Saban wanted him at his OC. Nick Saban apparently didn't even know he left Alabama to go to Miami, <laughs> which yeah. was kind of funny. That was um, great. And so, you know, we can't fault him for that, you know, because sometimes we like to say, oh, he made a bad hire in Nino's. Well, you can't say everything in hindsight, okay? But what you got to give Manny, Cre Manny Diaz credit where credit is due and the fact that he recognized it. He heard the noise not only for internally, but he heard the noise from the outside, especially from the boosters especially yeah. from the alumni. And he says, okay, we, we kind of, we need to shake it up. We can't go this style of offense. It just doesn't match with our defense. Okay. Our defense, what did he do when he came in? He said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to play fast. We're going to play downhill. We're going to attack. Now coming from uh, D'Onofrio's defense, that was music to our ears. We were like, yes. Right. 
But what did Manny yeah. Diaz do? He he showed it. We had a now we had a top twenty defense year in and year out, top in the categories all across the board, and that's what we need from Rhett Lashley in that offense. We need him to to you know match it up there with with what the defense can do, because so that he can score points, bring up that tempo. Defense stops. Defense can make stops and get him the ball because you know we're we're always on the top of the turnovers. Turn yeah. up, make those oh, turnovers we, into we points. We wasted. We wasted yeah. championship yes. defense. Yes, we, we did. Wasted that was that was the one. That was the one. Yes. In, yep. mm-hmm. inept offense. Inept yeah. offense. It's just we wasted it, and now you know. And now we have the chance to to take advantage. I mean, hopefully, you know, we have a season. We need it. like Manny Diaz needs this season. The University of Miami. We need the season. Back. This season, you we know? need 2020 to happen because if 2020 doesn't happen, De'Ara King's not going to happen. Gregory Russo is not going to happen. You know, us getting to the ACC championship is not going to happen, man. We had the recruiting, the the, the heat is on right now. Yeah. Like, we're t- we have to take, with the whole corona thing going on with recruiting, like, the kids aren't able to go visit outside. So we're able, this is almost like the 90s right now for recruiting when it comes to the University of Miami. Because the kids in Miami, in Broward, in West Palm, are not able to go to Auburn, to Alabama, to USC, to these big schools because of the restrictions that are on because of Corona. So who's able to see them? The University of Miami was able to see them during junior day. You know, we just lost that big recruit from from Booker T. I know the wide he's a top wide receiver. He committed to Alabama last week. But I mean, hey, Alabama, you know, like they're they're gonna they're gonna do their thing. They're always gonna get a top player from from Miami, from South Florida. So Nick Saban has he he has the goods, he has the need the need, the means to be able to get a top player. Jerry Judy's from down here, Calvin Ridley's from down here, mm-hmm. Amari Cooper's from down here. Yep. They're always gonna get a player from down here to go to Alabama. There's nothing we can do about that. But the the U has to do the best players from South Florida need to come to the University of Miami. They have to stay at the crib. They have to build this program. That's the only way. And coming off a terrible season, this is the time to do it. This is the yeah. time to do it. And, he, and here's where I want to disagree with you just a little bit, where Alabama is just going to, you know, you can't really do much about that with Alabama. Here's where I'm going to counter with that. If Miami, as long as college football is played, and Miami has a season that we believe they can't have, I believe they're a 10-11 win game, see, a 10-11 to, one, uh, 10 to 11 win uh, team here. I believe they're very capable of doing that. Those players may change their mind. Remember, this is only a, a verbal commit. Players change their minds all the time. That player may say, you know what? I love what I see out of Miami. I want to stay home. I want to make the crib great. I want to play in that offense. Why go all the way to Alabama? And they, but, that, a lot of that, uh, that could happen. But this is why we need this 2020 season. Absolutely. Corona, hey, the 2020 season is vital. We need the 2020 season because we have the potential. We have the potential to to go to the ACC championship. Yeah. Hey, if Manny Diaz wants to keep this job, 2020, we have to win the Coastal and we have to compete with Clemson. Like that's the minimum we have to do. It. Like that, and we we need that. We need the 2020 season for that. We have the talent right now. We have the players in place. To, to compete and to win the Coastal and not disappoint. And we have now the coaching staff. We have Lashley's offense. We have the quarterback who's catered to this offense yeah. to, 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 to win now. We, and that's what we need right now. That's what we need. Yeah, so some of those uh, transfer reporter additions that, that uh, Fernando and I have been talking about, Derek King being one of them, the transfer quarterback, the redshirt senior out of Houston, uh, that ran the spread, a version of the spread over in Houston. Uh, he comes over. Uh, Quincy Roach, that was a defensive end from, from Temple. What yes. a huge get up. You go from Jonathan Garvin, having potentially Jonathan Garvin and Gregory Rousseau to having Gregory Rousseau and Quincy Roach, you know, easily the top, you know, top two set getters, you know, outside of Chase Young last year. And, and, and not just that, don't forget, we got Jalen Phillips. Yeah. Who was the number one recruit Five star. of the 2017 class for UCLA? He had quit football. And hey, 
This is another big thing when it comes to the coaching staff. David Feely, remember this name. That's the strength and conditioning coach. This guy is making monsters in that weight room. Jalen Phillips looks like someone I created on Madden. Yo, <laughs> Jalen Phillips is the prototypical defensive end. We just have to get him back on the field. And he was the number one recruit for a reason. He went to UCLA, didn't work out. The guy, like, gave up football, and he's back. He came in here weighing, like, 220. Now he's up to, like, 260. He looks like an animal. Like, I'm telling you, we're, like, what used to be a weakness is now a strength. Dog. We're talking about Russo. We're talking about Roche. And we got Jalen Phillips at defensive ends, a rotation there that cannot yeah. be stopped. And the, the way that they're going to get sacks is by the offense scoring points. If we're up, they got to fucking throw the ball. They got to throw the ball, and they got to go after the quarterback. Yeah, no, that's a great point there. Uh, especially with Jafari Harvey, the, the freshman from last year. We've heard a lot of good buzz about him as well. The, 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 the defensive line coach, uh, Swally, was talking about him, hit that his twitch is the best he's seen. Yeah. He can't get him off the two deep. We're talking about three elite players in Jalen Phillips, Russo. Russo's going to be a top 15 pick in the draft next year. Roche most of them are, most of them are taking a top five. Yo, they, they, yeah, Every saying, mock I've seen is top five. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be up there. He was second in sacks behind Chase Young. Chase Young was second in the draft. He is he's an animal. You don't you can't teach size. The guy's six seven and yeah. he has this oh and he didn't even start for what the first few like the first he didn't start the first six games. Yeah, he didn't what, even start. He played, but he didn't what, what start. Have, oh my god, Patrick's out there. Like, yo, come on. <laughs> like, don't get me started. Arusso should have been there from the start, but okay. And he had 15 sacks without starting a game the first six games. But Russo, Jalen Phillips, Roche are your top three guys. Yeah. And this guy's talking about Harvey. He can't keep Harvey off the two deep because of his twitch. We have so much talent. Our defensive line is going to be such a strength next year that it doesn't matter about the inexperience that we have at linebacker or yeah. with the question marks we have at defensive back. The pressure that we're going to be able to get on the quarterback every week is going to be incredible because of the defensive line that we have. We haven't even talked about our defensive tackle, Severa and John Miller. And, and, and do you remember that, 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 that picture? It almost looks like a meme of what John Miller looked like when his freshman year to his sophomore year because yeah. of David Feely. Like, I mean, hey, the strength and conditioning program here, they, were, they, they, they had a special on ESPN before last season on David Feely and his, and his strength and I conditioning remember, yeah. program. It's, it's incredible. Like, this is what we need. We need this type. We need to, to make these kids into men. And it's done with the weight room. It's done with the strength and conditioning program. So it's basically uh, two more uh, keynote transfer portal additions is uh, Jose Borregales, the kicker, the transfer kicker at FIU. Finally, we get somebody who can kick yeah. a field goal. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and you know, his little brother's committed. His little brother's at Chaminade right now. Right. And he's committed for the 2021 class. Right. So hopefully he comes in here, can, can make – can make a 30-yard field goal, like, yo, automatic <laughs> stuff. Come on, please. Please. Yeah. And we then need we had, to, like, yo, come on, man. Like, yeah. we, like come on. It, it's then, not Florida State. This is not Florida of the 90s. Yeah. We need these field goals. We need points. You know, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be selling for field goals. My bad. We should not be selling for field goals. But if we need a field goal, we should be able to make a field goal. And that, I'm not asking the kicker to be 100% the year, but at least, you know, be very consistent. Give, give me something, man. Yeah. Give me something. You know, and then, you know, just the latest addition, which was a surprise to everyone because he went on the transfer portal, shocked everybody, and made a decision really quick. And Isaiah Walker Jr., and uh, he, he announced his transfer to Miami. He is, uh, as far as I know, he's officially a Kane. I don't know if the, all the papers and everything has been signed yet. So I'm not going to, but everything – points that on his Twitter, on his social media, he's a king. He's coming back to the crib. And he was he was an offensive four star out of New Orleans senior high. And uh we haven't had a an offensive tackle, that true offensive tackle since Eric Flowers. So 
you know. So, so Eric Flowers, you know, he went to Crop. He went. To, he graduated from Norland, won a state championship at Norland, and you know, and that's where, um, that's where our, our our boy is from over here, Isaiah Walker. But we we have hey, it's Isaiah Walker, and we got this kid Rivers as well. We got this kid Rivers as well from um uh, from or the Orlando area. Right. That you know Isaiah Walker might end up not playing tackle, but he might end up playing inside a guard, or Rivers might end up be playing inside at guard. And we have we like the offensive line is such is such a great like I love what's going on right now with the offensive line. This guy, Coach Justice, is doing an incredible job recruiting these kids. I don't know if you've seen the 2021 class, but we got this center from from the Columbus High School, Rodriguez, who's there. Yeah, Ryan we Rodriguez, got the kid I think his name from, is. Yeah. We got the kid from Central. We got to keep, keep him committed. Yeah. I know that LSU, I know that Auburn, I know these guys are going to get on them. We have to keep this guy. Lawrence Seymour from Central, we got to keep him committed but, but because we have something here that's building. We got the kid from uh, Stoneman Douglas. Uh, McLoggin, I, he's this tall, six. You again, you can't teach size. Six seven. He's only two hundred fifty five pounds, so he looks really skinny. So mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Feely is gonna have to come in here and give him some protein shakes, get him on the bench a little bit, get him squatting a little bit. But I mean, it, we have potential here with our offensive line, especially in the future, in the coming years where we're going to have an offensive line where it doesn't matter who our offensive coordinator is, we're going to have a dominant offensive line. And that's where football needs to be built. That's where the University of Miami got lost. In, in the early 2000s, we had, we had Brian McKinney. We had the Joel Rodriguez's. We had the Vernon Carey's. We had... Uh, Rick I'm, Romberg. Yeah, we had Brett Romberg, man. We had, a, it was built from the inside out. And and that's defensively as well. Vince Wilford, uh, Jerome McDougal, Baraka Atkins, it's built from the inside out. And that's a big thing that's missing here with the, this new University of Miami is the offensive line. And they need to be built from the inside out. And now with these young cats that are coming in, and I don't want them to start early. Isaiah Walker, hey, take your red shirt. Get bigger. You're, you're, hey, you're like 290 yeah. right now. I yeah. want you to come in at 320 next year. You know, athletic. Don't lose your athleticism. Let Philly get you big. Keep doing your ladder drills, you know, because this is what we need. We need our offensive linemen, our defensive linemen to get bigger, get stronger, and stay for four years, at least four years. Stay to your junior year. Don't leave early. Don't do the Ken Norton, the uh, McIntosh, when they had that. They're, they're the, the 2016, 2017 year when they had an amazing year and they all they left to the draft and went in the fifth or sixth round. Why would you leave early? Don't leave early. Like, yo, get built. Yeah. Become a second, a third, or, or even maybe even a first rounder. Like, get built here, man. This is, this is what the University of Miami needs. The University of Miami needs guys that are going to stay a little bit longer, build the program, and we can't have boys out there no more. So Vero was playing out there as a boy, man. Like, yo, you need to come. You need to become a man out there, bro. You need. You need. They they coming in here with the right mentality, but not the right body. And they need to get built and play. Especially on the line. Oh, yeah. on the line, man. We can't. Like uh, Zion. Zion had no reason to start last year. Like, I mean, the only because we needed him to start, I guess. You know, but. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 incredible. It's incredible. Like like this is what needs to happen here, with with our uh, with with the program. The program needs to be built with experience, experienced players. So as we're talking about the the players, and we're talking about certain groups, who, which group, which positional group in your mind do you think really has to step it up, really has to improve dramatically for this team to be successful this year? It's so many. It's so many. But it, it, off the top of my head, the wide receiver group needs to step up big time next year. I mean, K.J. Osborne was godsend last year. K.J. Osborne, he, he came in for that one year from Buffalo. 
and he was amazing. He was able to do it on punt return. He was able to do it in the slot, outside, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Where do we get that production from now? D. Wiggins needs to step up. Michael Redding needs to step up. I was telling you this the other day. Jeremiah Payton. Jeremiah mm -hmm. Payton is my breakout guy. <laughs> I think Jeremiah Payton is going to be the guy who steps up and becomes that number one if we have football in the fall. I'm telling you, Jeremiah Payton is that guy. I don't know everybody, all the insiders that I know of, we're all talking Jeremiah Payton was balling in practice last year. Why did he redshirt the whole year? We don't know. It, it, it's in the past now. He is gonna, he's going to come in. I think Jeremiah Payton is going to come out being the number one receiver for us. We have Mike Hartley, who has the experience. So hopefully he can lead these guys from the slot position. Uh, I, the wide receiver group is a huge question mark. But I think Jeremiah Payton steps up big time for them. Hopefully, D. Wiggins. We have the redshirt freshman, uh, Michael Redding. We have Mark Pope from last season. He had a couple of good games. Uh, oh, another kid, another kid, uh, uh, freshman, true freshman, mm -hmm. Xavier Restepro. Uh, Restepro. I think he's, yeah. yeah, I think he's going to be – I think he might, he, might, he might push for some playing time next year too. Uh, Xavier, I mean, he, he definitely has that slot look. I think he should take a red shirt. He needs to put on a, maybe a little bit of size, learn the offense. He, you know, he's going to be, you know, behind a lot of these receivers this year. He could definitely use a red shirt year. Um, you, you read my mind about which position group, the wide receiver group. Obviously, the offensive line is the, the biggest elephant in the room that needs to really dramatically improve, but we think they – really address those uh, needs, not only in the transfer portal, but in, uh, in the recruiting class. Also, the offensive line is, is they're returning everybody. I don't think anybody left as a senior last year, so they're really returning everybody. Those true freshmen that got all that playing time last year, they're coming back with more experience. They're going to get bigger. They're going to get stronger. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we don't have the offseason. You know, we only had four spring practices, and, you know, there's only so much Dan Philly can do. I know everybody's itching to get the, the players back on campus into the weight room and whatnot. Every school across the country is, is wanting that. Well, but um, Let me just mention, with the offensive line, I wanted to mention the offensive line first. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, now with, uh, with Red Lashley's offense, I'm not too worried about it anymore. Derrick King, like, Der King is legit. Like, yeah. yo, if we only had, like you mentioned, we only had four practices in the spring. We were able to even get those practices because most people start their spring in, in, uh, in the middle of March, late March, and stuff like that. The, the, the Canes were able to get at least four practices in before this whole corona thing hit. And De'Ara King showed out. They got into pads on that Saturday, and they were like, yo, this is why this guy is is in the top three for the Heisman next year. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we're talking about with Trevor Lawrence. We're talking about with Justin Fields. Jerry King is the typical college football quarterback, spread offense quarterback. And, the re and, and that's why I'm not too worried about the offensive line because we only need three seconds. You only need three seconds. Hey, quick offense, bam, hey, screen here, slant mm -hmm. here, a deep shot here. Like, this is why I'm not too worried about the offensive line. We have right. now the experience. Zion Nelson had a year to, like, to, to block for five, six, seven seconds uh, at the left tackle spot where he shouldn't have been <laughs> from the get-go. We have Donaldson. Even, Donaldson's always out of shape, man. If he can just come in in shape one year, he'll be okay. Uh, Gainer. Gainer's the anchor. Gainer at center is the anchor. He's going to set the, off, the, the tone for the offensive line. He's a great leader. I think he's going to be great there at center. Uh, uh, Clark and Scaife. I love Clark and Scaife. Jalen Rivers can come in here and compete for a starting spot. I think they should, they should redshirt him. I think he should sit and keep, keep gaining size. Him and Isaiah Walker are the future with the incoming freshmen that we mentioned before. I think we have offensive line wise, and I love offensive line. That's what I played in off in, in high school. So I love watching the growth. I love watching the scheme. I love watching these guys play. So I, I love the inside out of football. 
I, I think offensive line wise, I'm not too worried about it, especially in this new system, this new spread offense that they have uh, brewing at the U. Well, you know, the wide receiver group is like, like I mentioned, the same thing that was on the top of my list for the group that needs to really improve and really show to take that next step to, you know, keep things going here. You know, I, I, very fortunate that Miami does have like a go-to receiver in that tight end, Brevin Jordan and Will Mallory. So, and that's going to be very key because Lashley loves a tight end. So, you know, ha having Brevin Jordan, having Cameron Harris back there, you know, ha having these players will, could really help if the receivers can just catch the ball We'll be fine. <laughs> Brevin Jordan is like another receiver. Thinking about it, yep. honestly, like, it, hey, he lines up in the slot a lot. That Virginia Tech game, he should – I mean, we should have won that game. But I mean, Brevin Jordan is our number one receiver. Brevin Jordan is uh, – he should be a top 20 first-round pick in the draft next year. There's no way he's staying another year. Brevin Jordan – is that guy Brevin Jordan? This is going to be 2005, 2000. This is going to be the 2004 season that Kellen Winslow had, where they're just going to for they're just going to be keep force feeding the ball to Brevin Jordan. Brevin Jordan is elite. There's our receivers, and there's Brevin Jordan. Brevin Jordan is a talent that we haven't seen here since probably Kellen Winslow, maybe Greg Olson, and like Brevin Jordan is going to be is is going to be a first round pick. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's no there's no doubt about it. So which player, which player this year in 2020, which particular player are you really looking forward to watching this year? Oh, uh, absolutely it's Russo. Oh, Russo. I'm so excited about Russo. What do we got going on back there? Oh, I got my <laughs> son coming in. <laughs> can, can, can you say talk about the U? You. You. Good job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you should be asleep by now. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty late. Hold on. Go. So, our breakout player is like the obvious reason. The obvious player is Greg Russo. Greg Russo came on strong last year, out of nowhere, six foot seven, getting sacks all over the place. <laughs> Second, like I said earlier, second to Chase Young. Greg Russo is the obvious choice. But my breakout player, my player that I want to go see, <coughs> uh, go out there, I, I want to see this guy play, is Jeremiah Payton. I, may, I mentioned him earlier. He's the receiver that I think is going to break out, be our number one receiver next year. I want to see him play. One of the players I, I, I'm looking forward most forward to, to seeing this year it's actually on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Sam Brooks. I, I, I'm, really, I, I'm really intrigued because he had, he had a tremendous bowl game. I mean, he was all over the field in that bowl game against La Tech. And, you know, we're seeing – finally, okay, we got McLeod. He came back for his – you know, he did the, the right thing and he came back for a red – he took a red shirt last year, came back for a red shirt senior year. And, you know, we got Sam Brooks there, so who's going to pay the striker position? You know, that's up in the air right now. Who, and I'm not even going to start to venture to guess who should be that. But uh, at least you, you, you can get McLeod there with Sam Brooks adding another size, adding another year there. So that should help solidify that behind, you know, behind that defensive line. So that's the player I'm looking forward to really watching and, you know, seeing it. Can, can he keep that momentum going from the, from the bowl game? And that's, he's going to be, I think he's going to be a lot of fun to watch. He's a, he's a fast linebacker. What worries me about him is his size, man. He's small. He's small. He was listed on the injury report when spring practice first started in March. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that's coming from the bowl game, his shoulder, whatever it may be. I, 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 I you know, our linebackers, you know, like, I'm so happy that McLeod came, you know, was able to take that red shirt year. He was able to come back and be able to, come, you know, like McLeod, when he first came in, he was rated higher. He was rated higher than um, than Pickney, you know. He was rated higher than uh, Quarterman. He had the stature. He had the body. He had the stats. He had the speed. They, you know, they thought he was going to be the number one linebacker. And then, obviously, Quarterman and Pickney ended up being, uh, you know, uh, 
in, in getting in the draft. Uh, Pickney didn't get drafted because of the injury, hip injury he has. But I think McLeod is going to come in here determined to become a, a uh, draft pick next year. He has one shot. He has this 2000. It, that's another player who's going to be huge for us next season. McLeod, I think Sam Brooks is going to be humongous. I like Avery Huck. I like his high school film. I like what he's going to bring yeah. into the table. I think he can compete for that striker position, or if not, the outside one of the outside linebacker com- positions. I believe that, uh, but and he'll be one of those players that come in. Uh, another player that we haven't spoken about is Christian Williams. That's a player that we stole from Alabama. He was completely committed yeah. to Alabama. We took him. He completely redshirted last year, so he's gotten bigger. He's gotten stronger. I think he'll compete there for the top three spots with DJ Ivy, with Al Blaze, with, uh, with Couch. I think they'll, he'll be there competing with, uh, with the incoming freshmen. We have uh, Washington and we have uh, Harrell. Uh, I think uh, he'll, he'll be there to compete. He'll be here to compete. So which, which player are you, you – I know you mentioned Jeremiah Payne. Is there any other player that you really hope takes that next step that really just say, you know what, this is going to be his season. This is going to be, you know, his chance to shine. This is almost like a make it or break it year in a sense. Who do you think really hopes takes the next step? What's great about that question, I'm glad you asked it, is because we have a couple of guys who can, who can do that. Roche. Who just came? Who tra- who came to try? One he has one year. He has that KJ Osborne year, and KJ Osborne just got drafted by the Minnesota Vikings because of the year that he got with us. I think Roche might might have, and you know he has the push there for Jalen Phillips from Gregory Roche. Uh, we have R- Russo. We have uh, K- uh, Roche might might be that guy who is like, hey, this is my last chance. This is my last shot to be able to make an impact on a, on a team. That's definitely on the defensive side of the ball. I like Al Blades as well. In the court, he's been with us for now two years. Uh, you know, he has the legacy of his last name with uh, his father, Al Bl- the late Al Blades, uh, who, who he can step up as well at the corner position. And Mike Hartley. You can't forget Mike Hartley. Mike Hartley's been with us, what, now, three years? He's the senior. He's the leader of that wide receiver of, with that wide receiver room. Mike Hartley is probably the, in the, the, slot, the, the listed slot starter. Mm-hmm. Like, Mark, Mike Hartley is another guy you can't forget there in the wide receiver room. One of the players that – when you really think about a player that really needs to step up and when – when I was asking myself this question, the, the only name that kept popping up in my head by a player that I really, really want and I really hope he takes that next step is Mark Pope. I really want to see Mark Pope. I'm rooting for the kid. He was really highly touted coming out of high school. He was a, you know, he, he chose to come to the U. And, you know, as a true freshman, we're all wondering, where is he at? Come on, get on the field. And then last year, uh, you know, he had some, he had a few games here, and then he had some spots here and there. But is this going to be his year, his junior year? You know, is he finally going to turn things around? Is this particular offensive scheme finally going to fit what he does best? And I think yes. I really think yes. You know, can he buy for playing time behind Jeremiah or with Jeremiah Payne and with D. Wiggins and Mike Carley? You know, can he get some fair share of the targets? We don't know. He, I think he has two years to prove that and to prove that he can be a go-to car, uh, a target uh, in this offense. That's a player that I really – because he's got the speed. I, I think he's got the talent. He just needs to put it together. And, and I'm really rooting for the kid because that was one that was, you know, that I really wanted to see, you know, kind of be that Ahmad Richard, to kind of be that Jeff Thomas. Just, you know, start off as your freshman, just keep going. He didn't, he didn't hit that traction yet, but that's something that we hope to get over the next, next year or two. Man, I, I, like, I like that selection of Mark Pope, man. I, I like Mark Pope. I like – honestly, I follow him on Twitter. He, he dedicates every game to his late father. I really like Mark Pope. Uh, uh, he just he, – he has a lot of drops, man. I, and you could, talk, you could say that to every receiver that we have. You know, Hartley had big drops. Uh, Pope's had big drops. Wiggins has had huge drops. And, you know, we have this Michael Redding coming in, Restrepo coming in. Um, and, and and Jeremiah Payne coming in. So they're going to have to come in 
this this is the this is what we fail like this is what hurts of not having spring football is seeing who is going to be the top three receivers who went out there day you know on our spring game and lined up as the top three receivers yeah. in Rasley's offense that's the biggest thing we're missing from this you know corona what 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 to what got taken away from us with the coronavirus hopefully because ho- ho- hopefully if not to cut you off there but hopefully sure. that uh uh you know if, if spring practice or not spring practice if, if, if fall camp and, and everything can start returning back to some kind of normal say sometime mid-july you know these teams you know beginning of july mid-july these teams can start going back to school and they can start getting uh into back into conditioning they can start going back into things you know coaches say they need about at least six weeks or so of some kind of camp to get back into the season so you know that july 15 that mid-july is about the target date to get things going on to start the season on time we may not have had the spring practice and the in in, in the in the scrimmages but what sets up beautifully for miami are those first three games of the season when you have temple wagner and UAB, and you have those three games to really shake off the rust, to get in some kind of groove, to just gel and to get on tempo. It's almost like having three spring season games or three scrimmage games. Now, we lost to FIU. We lost a lot of tech, so we can't take anything for granted. But, well, we I don't care if we're playing the we cheerleaders. We yeah. can't take anything for granted. But We need it. Right, but we need it. And, that, and there is no reason why Miami cannot be 3-0 after those games. And, you know, go into that Michigan State. Because that Michigan State game, to me, is a measure bar. Where I, I like to call the first three games this, the, the preseason, the Michigan State, the measure bar, okay? Because where are we at after those three games? Playing up against a really good team in Michigan State. And, you know, what is it that we need to really quickly change, you know, after the Michigan Because win or lose, you know, there's things that you got to tinker with. Because yeah. then you go into your ACC game, right? Exactly. And then, right? And then you got the trap game. There's always a trap game, right? And that trap game to me is Wake Forest Friday night under the lights in, you know, in the, the Wake Forest Deacon Stadium. I don't even know what it's called, but it has <laughs> all the makings of a trap game. It has all the makings of, you know, ESPN and, you know, kind of like what, what North Carolina was last that, year. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. What, what, when Miami played Cincinnati many years ago, on a Thursday night, and they lost to a, you know, mid-tier team that had no business losing to. It just has all the rightness. So, you know, it's going to be an early test, an early preseason, but some early tests to shake off the rest and, you know, hopefully have a good ACC season there. Man, I, I completely agree with you. Like, this is the first year in how many years that we don't start off with a huge game to, 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 to start the season, right? Mm-hmm. We used to start to get, get the season off against Bethune-Cookman, against FAMU. The last couple of years, we started against LSU. We started against uh, Florida last year. Mm-hmm. At least this year, we can, like, warm up into the season. We can get, like, a preseason type of uh, feel to the type right. of – to see, you know, where, especially now with this whole, like, we didn't have spring ball. Who knows when these guys are going to get into training camp. They need at least six weeks to see right. where the team is at. Get three scrimmages in, see – you know, who are your true starters, who you can rely on for playing time. This is, this is, this is needed. This is it's, it's stuff that is needed. Spring ball, like, hey, you know, hey, this Corona thing is real. The Corona thing is serious, but it did affect the University of Miami in, in, uh, in, in, and seeing who is really going to be in the top of the depth chart when it comes uh, time when the lights turn on, like we said, in september right all right ladies and gentlemen that's gonna do it for this particular segment of the 2020 preview of the miami hurricanes undoubtedly we will have more of them as time goes on it's only uh the middle of may here so we're fernando and i will be back to talk more hurricanes between now and the start of football season uh, as as things happen here so don't forget to subscribe to youtube untamed opinions on the youtube channel untamed opinions on the podbean podcast uh and i'll be posting up on twitter on facebook leave us any comments anything that you may like any questions and we look forward to talking to you again thanks fernando appreciate it man hey right, man. okay all about the man. you that's right all about the you baby <laughs>